G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to have a look at what I believe to be the most slept on addition to War Thunder in this last patch. This is the Vortor 2N Late, and this plane comes with something special. It is the lowest battle rating plane to have semi-active radar homing missiles. And you might think that this is a very horrible addition, but it really isn't. There are a couple of things that make this plane very, very interesting. Not necessarily good, not necessarily overpowered, but certainly a plane that is worth having a look at. And today, that's what we're going to do. The Vortor is essentially just a regular Vortor 2A, 2N, but of course comes with those four missiles. They're okay. The missiles have a 10G overload or a 12G overload, and they basically perform kind of like an AIM-9B, but just a little bit more pull. They are, of course, uh, radar guided, and so you need to have a solid radar lock. And this is where the radar comes into play. The radar on the Vortour is substandard compared to some of the other planes with semi-active radar homing missiles, and uh, doesn't really perform well at low altitude at all. If you were to compare this to the MiG-21 SMT, MF, and BIS's radar, uh, it would perform extremely poorly. It is almost similar to that of the F3H. This particular radar has a range of about 820 kilometers and 37, and I really wouldn't use the distances further than that. Eight kilometers is kind of where you'll get the best uh, sort of filtering, if you will, and that is kind of, that and 20 kilometers are the only two ranges that I tend to use. So what I'm doing here is I'm essentially climbing off into the bombers. I'm not really sure if this particular match is an up tier or a down tier, uh, but I will have known when I'd spawned in. This is essentially just going for the TU-4s. This plane is essentially the perfect TU-4 hunter. It's a plane that has the, that range where it can maintain impunity from those absolutely nasty 23mm cannons. Now, a Yak-38 appears in the distance, and this tells me that I am practically fully up tiered. The Yak-38 has R60s, and if the Yak-38 decides to get on my tail, I am pretty much dead, because at the end of the day, this is still just a Vautour. The Vautour is not a good plane in terms of its raw airframe and in terms of its ability to dogfight. It's not a great uh, dogfighter at all. It's heavy, it's fat, it's reasonably slow, it doesn't accelerate particularly well, and the guns are okay. But there's nothing truly special about the guns on the Vautour. It's two defers. Now, there is a Yak-38 here, and because we're at a nice high altitude, the Yak-38 is nice and slow, and I'm going to send one of those missiles away. You can see the way that this missile tracks is quite nice, but it isn't really able to sustain anything super high, yet I'm still able to put one into the Yak-38 there. That gives me kill number one. You can see these missiles are like quite physically large, uh, so the ability to turn and burn would be, you know, theoretically quite high. You would liken them to, say, an AIM-7 in a glide mode, where you would lose a lot of speed in a single turn, but you could you could turn and cut into that turn quite well. So that's the way I see these missiles. Now, as you can tell, this is where the problem comes in with this plane. Despite being an 8.7, you do regularly face 9.7s, and you will also find lots of battles going on at sea level. These missiles are very poor at sea level. So you're not going to really find many opportunities to get some easy kills at that area, but Yak-30D here becomes victim number two. These particular missiles are a lot of fun, and that is what I think the beauty of this plane is. Not necessarily how competitive it is, but how fun it is. And I genuinely believe that this plane is a lot of fun, simply because it has that little, little caveat. It has that ability to fire from an all aspect. Despite it being extremely limited, I think it's kind of cool. Of course, your altitude performance isn't that great, and your dogfighting performance is abysmal, but that's one of the trade-offs that you make in this situation, in that lovely triad that I like to call upon, the performance, avionics, and uh, weaponry triad. 
So now that our opponents are pretty much vanquished at that higher altitude, we are going to slowly head towards the deck. Now I have two missiles left, and we can always save these for later. You don't have to waste them or jettison them or whatever. Uh, but this uh, scimitar here has crashed into the ground. That would leave me in a one versus three. So am I going to take my chances? I think in this case I will, simply because there are not many other opportunities around. We're going to go and sort of follow the opponents around, and maybe I think and second guess myself and turn back. This plane is not that much faster than a couple of other of its contemporaries at the deck, and of course against 9.0s it is practically slower than all of them. I actually can't think of off the top of my head a 9.0 that is slower than the Vautour. I personally believe that the Vautour is a 7.7 .7 airframe, and in this case we have a fairly unique and fairly interesting uh, weapon system, which rightfully so, puts the plane at 8.7. In this case here, we are coming in for the J2, and the J2 is pretty distracted. I can't maintain that lock on the J2, so I'm going to switch to the Su-25, which I know is extremely deadly. If he manages to send a missile away, he will get the kill on me, because those R60Ms are a simple get-out-of-jail-free card. But unfortunately for him, he's going so slow, and he isn't able to nearly perform as well as I expected him to, and he gets number three. We have the J2 here coming in again behind us, and I have built up a lot of speed in that dive, so I'm going to be able to get away from him, but if this was a regular uh, horizontal pursuit, I think the J2 would come in and win every single time. So you have to be really careful of who you choose to engage and when you choose to engage, because the Vutor is an all-or-nothing type plane. Now, this does put me a fair distance away from my friendly F-86 here, and this does give the enemies time to strike, which is really, really risky, because if he dies, then I pretty much lose all of my opportunities to get further kills. The J2 here is going to be the next victim of missile, but unfortunately, I'm a little bit too ambitious there, so I finish him off with the guns instead. And the guns are the other nice thing about this plane, but at the same time, they're no, they're no Vulcan 20 mils, they're no Revolver 20 mils. These are Defo 30 mils. They do punch hard, but the accuracy and the range is pretty much terrible on these. There goes kill number four, and the MiG-17 is pretty much all there is left in this part of the battlefield. There are a couple of more bombers, I believe, uh, but this MiG-17 is about to meet a sticky end. It looks like he is a little bit distracted there with the uh, F-86, and he's quite slow, so this is a prime opportunity for me to come in. You are sort of meant to play this plane as a sort of missile bus. The missile bus sort of tactic I refer to is by traveling fast, taking targets of opportunity, and using your speed. Because this plane does not perform very well in dogfights, you kind of have to make it up by uh, sort of zooming around the battlefield and picking off easier targets. And whilst that does sound a little bit uh, scummy, if you will, or it might sound a little bit sort of uh, rat type gameplay, uh, this is really the only thing that makes planes like these viable. And quite frankly, it is the most effective way to play these planes. So if you see someone playing super passive and not dogfighting, then this is the type of gameplay that the uh, Vautour is meant to exemplify. That uh, hit and run tactics, keeping that speed, because at the end of the day, you can't do low speed dogfighting. You can hardly dogfight a Harrier. You can, you'll, you'll struggle to pretty much dogfight any other single engine fighter and most twin engine fighters at this battle rating. So you're not gonna have a good time in the dogfighting area. You are, however, going to have an excellent time as a missile bus. And this is where we get to the next match. This is a down tier, I believe, and is probably as good as it's gonna get. These particular matches can come few and far between. And of course, when you're fully up tiered, you kind of might as well kiss your ass goodbye because there's not a whole lot that you can do against the opponents that you face, especially the Su-25, which has those all aspect missiles. The Su-25 is probably the biggest threat to you at this battle rating, and then that is only secondary to things like the MiG-19 and, of course, the, uh, the Harriers. So, as this plane is an excellent bomber hunter, we are going to lock another missile here on this IL-28. I'm not even sure if I'm ever going to get that kill, and so I pull away. There's a Saab 105 chasing that Vautour, and this might be an opportunity here to get a missile kill because he's at altitude and everything is going to line up 
until the sub 105 dips below the horizon and that is where it pretty much ends you are not going to be uh, having sort of reliable missile locks if you do have an opponent that dips below the horizon now something appears practically out of nowhere so i'm going to turn the camera there and it is an f84f now i'm very fast compared to the f84f and it is a bit of a shame that the f84f is at such a high battle rating so kind of sucks for him and the f86 uh, has some friends as well so we're going to go a quick head on with him uh, cut the bullshit and just keep flying in a straight line keeping the speed up and getting some distance away from the furballs. This Saab 105 that is sitting underneath me is a grave threat because if he manages to pitch up, he can fire an AIM-9. And of course, the AIM-9B, whilst it isn't a very good missile, is still a threat enough for this plane to really dump a lot of speed and throw it. you, you have to throw it into some very harsh maneuvers. And so I want to try and avoid that, and I want to try and also stick around my team and it's clear that this is not really happening i'm sort of weighing up here whether or not i want this sub 105 and then i think i decide that it's best that i go and hunt something else that my teammates are also engaging again uh Im imposing that uh, hit and run type gameplay that missile bus gameplay the vultor is a great fun to fly but in an up tier in a hairy situation, if it is on the defensive in any way, shape, or form, this plane fucking sucks. It is not a plane that can be flown defensively, and that is where the severe limitations of this plane come into effect. You have to remember that this is a meme plane. It's not a meta plane. It's obviously not uh, something that you should be dogfighting with, and because it has such a limited flight envelope in this respect, it is an okay plane at best. Don't expect to go like five to one in every single match that you play. You would best be doing that in something like a MiG-17 or a LIM-5P. But uh, the Vultor as a meme plane, if you sort of just want to take a load off and, and have a laugh, yeah, it's great. And this MiG-17 is about to know the result. Not necessarily because of the missile, but yeah, you can see that dogfighting capability there, practically non-existent. The MiG-17AS is very firmly focused there on the Sea Vixen, and now that I'm below 500, and, uh, 500 kilometers an hour, I can pop the flaps and roll over onto my back there, going down on the MiG-17 in a dive. This MiG-17 will uh, now be a, a good target, but you can see there I've got my nice little lock, and I'm just not sure how long that lock will last for, to be honest because those are very hard to hold for this radar. It's quite unusual, actually, that I've managed to hold this lock on the radar, and you can see as he starts to sort of level out, that, that lock will eventually break. And there we go, there we have it. The lock is broken, and the MiG-17 is a free bird. So instead, I'm going to turn my attention here to the A4E. I'm going to early uh, sort of anticipate the turn, and I'm not going to full commit to it because that's going to put me into the dirt. So we're going to continue going straight and use that speed to uh, sort of get more distance away from your opponents. So as we roll over, we have an enemy that is very firmly being engaged by... Uh, so, sorry, a friendly that's firmly being engaged by the enemy. And this means that we have effectively uh, free reign. We, we don't, we're not constrained by that little dogfight. We won't be worried that they'll uh, pitch up and go for a head-on. Now, this A4 is looking very juicy, so I'm going to reduce the throttle this time to reduce the amount of compression. Go for a preemptive strike here, and the A4 goes down. This leaves me with the MiG-17, and I do have a lot of speed to pick up here. This could potentially put me in an energy disadvantage against the MiG-17, because the MiG-17, at the end of the day, is both faster and probably retains energy better than me. I'm going to go for a quick head-on here, and I take a nice critical hit there to the MiG-17. It looks like he might go down, but I think he ends up returning back to base anyway. So uh, I'm going to give chase anyway. I'm just going to give chase. I've got plenty of fuel. I've got enough ammo. I've got a missile. And I think that there is even a uh, an IL-28 that is still in the game. So there is an opponent here that I can very easily take out with a missile. A lot of the time, whilst the IL-28 is good at manoeuvring, and I would almost put it as good at, as manoeuvring as the uh, the Vultur, the um, 
IL-28 pilots don't really tend to pay attention, and so they end up paying a repair cost instead. This gives me sort of prime opportunity to take out easy targets, essentially. And that's what that bomber hunting at the beginning of the match kind of is. It's that easy pickings. It's, it's taking those targets that are not paying attention and making a quick and decisive blow. Now, speaking of quick and decisive, this MiG-17 is dragging things out. He's heading back to base. He is very low on, uh, on engine power. He must be sort of damaged to the point where I'm actually able to catch up. But I think I'm going to go for the Saab 105 instead because I see the Saab 105 as a bigger threat. Uh, not necessarily to other planes, but certainly to me because it can just outturn me. It has the guns and it is, uh, most importantly, fresh from the airfield. This this sort of plane with two M9s is, is way deadlier. If I were to go and continue pursuing the MiG-17, it could simply turn around and pick me off. So that fresh guy from the airfield is a lot more deadly than you think. The MiG-17 here is pretty much all the way at his airfield. And uh, this gives me uh, I, I, I sort of... This is my only opportunity, really. I am going to go here head on with the IL-28 send him a missile, and there goes my easy, decisive kill. So, it's the MiG-17 and a couple of other planes left, and I think I'm on kill number 5 at the moment, so I really want to make it like a 6, 7, or 8 kill game. That would be awesome, but at this point here, we're getting just too close to the enemy airfield, and the MiG-17 is pushing his luck. He's just, just gotten his luck in just so perfectly. So, at this point, we're just going to dip. The missiles are starting to ring out. I go for a quick burst, nowhere near close enough, and the IL-28 is coming in anyway, so I don't want any of that, and it looks like these enemies are sticking to their airfield, which is, you know, understandable considering that someone has just come in and, uh, you know, destroyed two of, their, two of their friendly planes, but at the same time, you know, come fight me. Come, come give me a good dogfight IL-28. I reckon the IL-28 could have probably won if he uh, sort of had his wits about him, but... Alas, that is not the case, and we head back to the airfield without our two kills. But that's okay, we are back in the air, and there is the MiG-17, fresh and, uh, you know, well-missiled. There is also an F-9F, and the F-9F is a, an F-9F Cougar, because who flies the F-9F Panther? This guy has AIM-9Bs, and I need to be careful, I need to keep my speed, and you can see me starting to sort of lock up there, uh, not quite able to get my guns on the F-9F, and not quite able to get my guns on the MiG-17AS until he turns around and leaves a prime target for me. There we go. Nice, easy. Spray and pray. There goes our next kill. Uh, and that is, I believe, kill number four. Oh, dear. Looks like I've made a miscalculation. But that's okay, because the c in there is practically ready to bait the next one. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be prime pickings from here because the F9F is firmly latched onto the asshole of the C Vixen and wants that juicy booty. So we're going to go for a nice easy kill here. And this is exactly the type of kill that you need to go for in the uh, in the Vautour. It's just those opportunity kills that are sort of necessary because they're the only ones that you'll really make the most of. This plane has the ability to do wonderful things, but if you are on the offensive, this is the only time that you can strike and actually make a difference. Whereas if you are on the defensive, you're going to struggle a lot. But overall, this is a really fantastic meme plane and something that is a welcome addition to the game. And again, a rare France, France W. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching today's video. I sincerely appreciate you spending your time and watching the content. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, head over down to the links in the description and you can find plenty of ways there. But until then, take care and I'll catch you next time.